let me welcome you all to the Q1 FY20 earnings call of Uflex Limited. From the management today, we have Mr. Rajesh Bhatia, the group CFO, and Mr. Rajesh Agarwal, the VP, Investor Relations. So without any further ado, I'll hand over the call to Mr. Agarwal, who will take the call over from here. Thank you, and over to you, Rajesh. Thank you, Shraddha. Uh, I would like to welcome all of you to Q1 FY20 earnings call of Uplex Limited. On the call today, we have with us our, our group CFO, Mr. Rajesh Patia, along with other members of the senior management team. Uh, before we begin, I would like to mention that some statements made in today's uh, discussion may include predictions, estimates, or other information that might be considered forward-looking. And a statement of this effect has been included in the invite which was emailed to everybody earlier and also available on our website. I would also like to emphasize that while this call is open to all invitees, it may not be broadcasted or reproduced in any form or manner. Uh, we would like to start this call with opening remarks uh, from the management, followed by an interactive Q&A session, wherein you can discuss your viewpoints on the key issues. I would now like to invite Mr. Bhatia to discuss the company's operations and results for the quarter under review. Over to you, Mr. Bhatia. Thank you. Thank you, Rajesh, for giving an intro and uh, welcome all of you to this uh, first quarter earnings call for FY 1920. Uh, I think uh, a steady quarter overall. Uh, we've seen the uh, you know the packaging films volume, uh, the packaging business volumes grew by about five percent uh, in the quarter, while the films uh, uh, on the packaging film side the volumes have been rather uh, uh, you know sort of static during this quarter, but. Uh, uh, overall, uh, still we could manage uh, uh, revenue, consolidated revenue increase of uh, close to about 4% and uh, uh, EBITDA increase of about 8.6% uh, YOY and uh, on a consolidated basis and then EBITDA increase of about 12% on a uh, standalone basis. Uh, uh, but you know, because we have a rather a subdued quarter for uh, for our engineering, region, which is uh, you know obviously we seeing that uh, you know the the economic situation around us where the capex cycle is uh, put on hold by you know uh, many companies. So we are also feeling the burn of this, and uh, according uh, you know uh, consequently that division has not done so well. Uh, but uh, just to give you a flavor of uh, uh, of the things excluding that, uh, so excluding that, if we see a beta YOY growth consolidated is about 18%, and a standalone a beta growth is about uh, 35%. Uh, so that, uh, uh, you know, really uh, goes to tell us that, you know, the core business where we are uh, flexible packaging films and the packaging has done reasonably well and uh, uh, we have uh, at a pat level still a slightly lesser number because of the higher incidence of taxation uh, in the in the current quarter and uh, uh, but overall things are uh, uh, quite steady in this quarter and we are uh, you know, looking to uh, uh, have uh, a beta margin of about uh, 14% what we have achieved in this quarter. But if we if we take out the uh, numbers, uh, the engineering number, we close to about 50, almost at 15% uh, a beta margin on a consolidated basis. So uh, I think the margins in the pack in the packaging side. Uh, can still be better, and that's what uh, we are all uh, uh, pushing for the value added uh, products like pouches and uh, giving a lot of thrust to the exports so uh, you know we we expect that you know the volumes both on the packaging uh, business and the films business in the subsequent quarters of the current financial year will be will be better. Uh, overall, on a, on a packaging side, for the year as a whole, uh, you know, our target is to achieve about seven to eight percent growth. And uh, on the film side, though, I've been saying that you know we we have uh, you know uh, capacity utilization levels at a very uh, 
uh, you know almost at the uh, almost at the capacity uh, uh, levels uh, in some of the plants but we still looking at as to where we can do a better job so obviously mexico is one place where we can do a better job uh, as we go along in the subsequent quarters we will also have to live with uh, a, you know a slightly lesser production volume numbers because uh, on the film side because we are looking we we decided to shift uh, our facility one of our facility two facilities in dubai to uh, Rush, uh, to russia uh, in the moscow region and uh, uh, we we expecting that you know we'll be able to commission that facility by january or february and in the meanwhile we are uh, we'll we'll also make up those volumes we'll retain those customers by uh, you know uh, having some of the volumes uh, on a done on a trading basis and also see if you know some of our other facilities can uh, produce uh, uh, can produce more to to fill up that gap uh, but you know the idea was there uh, in russia also as the market grows uh, to be closer to the customer and you know in our experience that is what has helped in uh, being in kentucky or in poland or in egypt uh, so that's what uh, that's what the whole idea is apart from savings in the freight costs from uh, you know because this plant was already dedicated uh, to russia and other cis countries a la very large part of its output was being sold in these territories itself so you know shifting it would help us save on the transportation cost the import duties in those countries as well as the uh, you know the energy costs in russia are going to be much lower as compared to what they are in dubai and the closer to customer will obviously uh, we've seen in the, in the our other jurisdictions that gives that helps you to get better margins because you know the customer need not keep in long uh, where a customer will can then keep shorter inventories which help him uh, a better uh, cash flow working capital cash flow cycle and that's what uh, you know our uh, endeavor is uh our projects in uh, hungary as well as nigeria are uh, are on course and uh, uh, you know we have placed orders for the uh, for the main plant and machinery we have we are also close to uh, achieving our uh, uh, financial closures for nigeria for hungary we have already achieved uh, nigeria is uh also more or less done but you know uh, we uh, we will we'll sign on the dotted line in a couple of weeks from here on and uh, we we uh, we are on course as per our uh, our schedules to uh, you know uh, commission those uh, facilities so that's uh, in nutshell is the uh, is the summary for the for the quarter which has just ended uh on the on the margins on the bopet as well as on the bopp side uh, the bopp margins this quarter have been better and uh, uh, we we had seen in q2 of last year you know the BP, bopp margins had uh, gone to the uh, rock below levels but you know uh, they, thereafter we been improving on those margins every quarter and q1 uh, definitely we we've, we've seen the better margin bopp margins in uh, in india uh, the bopet film margins are also slightly better in this quarter as compared to sequential as well as the uh, you know uh, yeah, same period last year uh, but uh, you know and the bopet uh, in the uh, films continue to do uh, good for the uh, overall basis in india as well as globally uh, you would have seen uh, some of the other competition results also are largely in the bopet and you know everybody is riding a uh, cycle uh, up wave in, in in the cycle and uh, uh, all our competitors whether it is polyplex or srf or jindal poly uh, so everybody has shown 
uh, better results and so we have uh, so that's uh, you know broadly the um, sum that's what broadly sums up the q1 and uh, i would open the house to any questions that you may have and uh, we will try to answer as 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 best we can on this call but if there are certain things we cannot uh, then you know we can take it offline and uh, reply accordingly thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may enter star and 1 on the attached tone telephone if your questions have been answered and you wish to withdraw yourself from the queue you may enter star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles we have the first question from the line of devansh negotia from simple please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity Uh, sir, uh, I just had a question re regarding to the bopet film industry. I mean, how are we really looking at the demand supply dynamics going forward for the next three years? And uh, similar question for BOPP films. So, I mean, are both the products really uh, their cyclicality correlates to each other, or they the demand and supply di dynamics are completely different? If you can just throw some light on that. Okay. So, a uh, bopet. uh had a good run for the last year year and a half and uh, uh while we are we seeing some of the capacity additions in this financial years and uh, in this financial year uh but i think given the demand side is pretty robust and growing at about uh, 9 to 10% uh, annually uh so that impact will be uh, will be felt in a very limited way as these capacities come up and uh, we we seeing that uh, you know a 9 to 10 percent demand growth uh, uh, there there is at times uh, you know the new bunching of capacities one or two come together and that's what uh, you know brings down the realization temporarily but overall we we seeing that you know uh, the bopet side the margins will continue to uh, be stable uh the bopp films uh, obviously you know uh, that was there was an overhang of uh, uh, you know excess capacity in the bopp and to that extent you know we we saw that uh, there was a substantial uh, uh, capacity uh, added which you know has kept the uh, you know the prices low for almost a year now but uh, you know q1 we have seen about 8% uh, uh, price increase uh, margin increase i would say in the uh, in the bopp films category and there we we will we uh, expect that you know the margins will still be better in the quarters to come mm -hmm. and sir uh, if you can help us understand that i mean uh, when we look at bopet films uh, is it a regional commodity or i mean it's a global commodity as in any uh, significant uh, capacity addition in europe will that affect uh, the pricing in india i mean i mean is the freight cost that high to you know really uh, disrupt the demand and supply dynamics in india so i think overall what we expect is that uh, uh you know the europe which is a net which is a net importer today for the uh, bopet films and uh, you know with the with the new capacities coming up there uh you know slowly we will move into a situation where uh you know uh, they will the imports will reduce and all that and some of the indian companies who are already exporting uh, to their like srf is exporting to europe but they are setting up the plant in hungary also now so they will substitute their uh, you know indian exports to europe with the local uh, supplies from there and these exports may be channelized to some other place or you know as uh, demand in india is growing so there'll be a readjustment of the uh, of the overall uh, uh, you know numbers uh, but i think everybody is working on a formula that you know uh being closer to the customer helps and that's what uh, uh, you know the the things look like as of now 
So there will be some readjustment of the demand supply, whether, you know, if if there is a demand which is there in uh, Europe from India, which is met by Indian companies. So they may be, that may be redirected to some of the other territories or to some of, uh, or to India itself uh, over a period of time. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Ranjan Jain from Nirmal Bang. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So, sir, first question is the engineering division. I just want to understand what kind of a margin this division enjoys because um, I was under the impression that the margins are not very high. But the impact during this quarter looks like the margins in this in this divisions are really high. So, um, in Q1 uh, last year, we had uh, engineering EBITDA of close to about 25 CR. While in this quarter, it's about 5 CR. So, there is a substantial, uh, you know, impact of that in this quarter vis-a-vis uh, -vis engineering. Uh, and you see uh, this, I mean, what is the outlook going forward for this? I think engineering, we will have some challenge unless, you know, the investment cycle in India, uh, you know, gathers pace again. Uh, so, you know, next couple of quarters, there may be, uh, you know, impact of overhang of that on the on the performance of the engineering division. Uh, second question is, sir, in the films we have seen, as you said, that because of the capacity constraints, probably we are not able to gain any volume growth. Uh, and that is evident from the numbers what you have showed in the press release also. Uh, so, are we planning any capex in that or are we likely to continue with the same kind of flat volume because it so, is somewhere restricting our overall growth no so uh, you know keeping that in mind itself last quarter we had announced uh, you know uh, the green fields in nigeria as well as hungary uh, so that is uh, uh, what our plan is uh, currently uh, and, you know, one line, as I said earlier, that it's being shifted to Russia because uh, it caters to that market itself. So uh, we will do our best in terms of, uh, you know, squeezing out the last uh, kilogram from, the, from, from our existing facilities, and that's what we've been doing uh, over, the, over the years. Uh, there are there are still some scope in Mexico and uh, a little bit in Dubai, but largely I think uh, we've done uh, with our existing capacities and you know uh, any fresh uptake in the growth volume, substantial uptake in the volume growth will come from the new capacities. And these new facilities would be would be commencing from when, sir? Uh, this will take about, uh, I would say, uh, just give me a moment. I think by, uh, from the uh, FY21 uh, beginning. Okay. Uh, sir, this facility, what we are shifting from UAE or Dubai to Russia, so this Dubai facility has been closed down or it would be towards the end, I mean, towards the end of December or January when the new facility would start, then we will kind of close down. How this would uh, go on? No, no, we are not, so, so the same plant and machinery, so Dubai, we have two plants. So we are keeping one plant in Dubai and we are shifting one to Russia. So uh, this existing line which was producing in Dubai has already been in the process of dismantling now, so it's not producing anymore. And by uh, January or February, we will start producing the, uh, at uh, Russia. And then you have also talked about the various benefits of shifting the facility to Russia. Is it possible to give it some range in terms of the savings we can see overall once this line is starting for the FI-21? I think we'll see some margin expansion. How much it comes through, we'll have to, you know, really see on the ground. Uh, but the key uh, idea is to, you know, protect the markets because, you know, once the market develops beyond a particular point, 
uh, you know, and if somebody else locally starts producing, then uh, and uh, you know the, they can then go to the government and say that you know put more duties to protect the local industry and all that. So I think uh, we we are trying to preempt that situation, so so that nobody uh, comes uh, in in that uh, particular region. So that's why we are. And if if uh, if this line would have been catering to some other jurisdiction, probably uh, the answer would have been to have a new facility here, like we've done in Nigeria. But because this line was already dedicated to this region. So it makes natural sense not to incur a new capex, rather to uh, you know shift the line itself uh, over there. But overall, uh, I think we feel that there'll be a margin expansion of uh, about uh, 15 cents or so per per kg. Okay, that's uh, very helpful. So one last we uh, one last question from my side in this. Uh, during this quarter, we have not seen any update on the receptive packaging. So, would be helpful if you can give us some uh, light on that also. How is it growing? What is the current number of customers? So, current we have uh, 43 juice customers, six dairy customers, and 16 liquor customers. Uh, the utilization of uh, levels are are better in the uh, in the current quarter, uh, but again, uh, I I would say that uh, you know the large customers which uh, which we are targeting, uh, I think that hasn't happened as yet, and uh, uh, in the absence of that, I think uh, we will. Uh, not be in a position to give you a very, uh, you know, detailed guidance on as to how the things will 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 pan out in this. So let's wait for the next quarter to see as to you know uh, how do we perform on the large customers account before we make any meaningful statement or uh, uh, any meaningful guidance to the to the various investors to say as to how how this performs. So as of now, we are not even uh, catering or uh, uh, adhering to our earlier guidance of 50-55% kind of uh, capacity utilization for this year? Yeah, that will happen if we have the large customers coming in. So obviously all those guidance was based on, you know, some of the customers, we we signing some of the new customers, uh, the large one customers, the, the top five or six. Uh, but I think uh, that is uh, still not happened in this quarter. Okay, so just last thing. Uh, in this, and some time back, we have also uh, uh, released a press release saying that we, there's a stake sale of UTEC developers. Yeah. If, can you give something, some details about it? Which company is it? Is it is some real estate company of the of the Uflex and uh, uh, I mean, what so is it? Uflex has a subsidiary called UTEC Developers, which was uh, which had some. 100 odd crore of investments into some real estate assets so we uh, we are uh, divesting that biz and uh, uh, you know there is uh, there is a due diligence process which is currently uh, you know sort of uh, going on so i think in current quarter we will have uh, uh, you know either uh, more clarity on the whole contours of that deal or it may, in the worst situation, it may get spilled over to the Q, Q3. Uh, uh, so I think largely what what we are doing is that, you know, that is a non-core activity. And, uh, you know, the real estate sector as a whole has been languishing for a while. So let's get rid of that and concentrate on the core things. Sure. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Aman Sontalia from AK Securities. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Yeah. Sir, today I have attended the phone call of the Easter industry. They were saying that the trade uh, was around 55 rupees in uh, Q1, and now it has come down to around 45 rupees. So whether we are seeing the same pressure in India and uh, overseas also? No, come again. I, I couldn't hear properly, sir. 
Still, industry has told me that uh, the uh, spread in the Q1 was around 55 rupees in Bombay. Now okay. it has come down to 45 rupees in India. So we are seeing the same situation, and uh, in internationally also the situation is very much same. No, no, no. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, you know, as of now, uh, there is there is no uh, no uh, such uh, situation in India or overseas. Uh, the business is as usual. So margins are better in uh, international market compared to India. So they've always been, as we as we uh, as we see. Uh, if we look at our international businesses, obviously we find that you know margin for us have been uh, a bit better there as compared to what we have in India. Because one of one of the main reasons for that is also because you know we've not invested in any new plants after 2003. So some of our uh, you know energy requirements or efficiencies of these plants are uh, uh, not uh, in line with the what the you know the new facilities are. So obviously, as compared to a new facility, uh, the efficiency and on the energy side or on the production side because you know today you have lines which produce about uh, 4000 4500 tons a month uh, the earlier lines are 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 lesser uh, and uh, but you know to run the machine is the same so you run the you run the same machine uh, with the same uh, you know uh, set of people as well as the other uh, you know the maintenance cost. It's not that the machine is big, so the maintenance costs would go higher, uh, and the energy efficiency also comes into play. Uh, so for us, definitely the margins in the ex uh, our overseas businesses have been definitely better. And sir, uh, what is the reason for higher interest and depreciation for the quarter? So I think higher interest could be uh, we had the facility. Uh, from uh, you know this uh, for our expansion of our holographic in Jammu, which was getting delayed uh, for uh, for many months now. So with that capitalization, uh, I think uh, uh, we are uh, that impact little bit impact uh, is there for that capitalization on interest as well as the depreciation. And sir, so whether we have debited any exceptional charges in this quarter? No, we have not. No. And uh, whether the holography business uh, it is running, uh, it is stabilized or whether it will take some no, time? No, it, it has just commenced uh, things in this in the Q1. So obviously that new product range, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, which is there. So we are we are now uh, telling our customers that you know this is what uh, our new range is, and we can. Uh, so we we are looking to uh, you know uh, utilize that facility. And sir, what the is the current status of this exclusive? Uh, uh, Brand uh, which you are uh, making in uh, USA, I think, uh, the recycled plastic. Uh, so, what is the current uh, position and uh, what is the future prospect of this business? See, I think uh, that PCR thing has a has a great future because you know, with the sustainability coming to the forefront, uh, the customer wants uh, um, you know a f recycled film. Um, made not from the virgin material, and obviously he's ready to pay a premium for that. So it's still initial days for for those kind of uh, experiments and uh, for those kind of uh, demand and supply situations. But yes, there is a uh, there is a, a you know I think a huge uh, demand today, and probably. Uh, not enough supply side today, so even the cost of that raw material is much higher than a virgin raw material. Uh, but you know, as people look at this and spend put more investment into uh, into the waste plastic uh, waste management, I think things will uh, evolve on their own in the in the next couple of years. But clearly, 
uh, you know, as we seeing in the energy world that, you know, the renewables is the way to go. Obviously, in this field also, to the extent uh, you uh, stop or to the extent you less, you you use the virgin materials as less as possible and recycle the, uh, you know, the plastic waste. Um, I think that's, that would be the uh, way to go in the future. Uh, still early days for us, but we have achieved 90% uh, uh, when we make uh, the films in USA that has a 90%, uh, you know, the recycled pet bottles, recycled raisin content. Uh, today that's what we've been able to deliver to our customers as of now. Uh, so how is that, the, um, yeah, tell me. So how is the margin outlook uh, for the packaging business going forward? So packaging business margins uh, are have improved in this quarter slightly uh, because of a slightly higher capacity utilization also. Uh, I think uh, they bottomed out uh, last year, the packaging industry margin. So we, we can now look at a much better performance in the next couple of years. The industry is also getting consolidated. There were a few small plants which uh, which got acquired and uh, obviously that consolidation helps in uh, a price stabilization because these are the small people then who uh, want to somehow penetrate into a customer and uh, you know uh, play on the price part uh, but they uh, you know they are not able to sustain for a very long period of time and that's where uh, you know, eventually they sell out, and that's what has happened in the industry over the last couple of years. I see that trend continuing, or rather becoming, uh, uh, you know, uh, there'll be small units which will either close or get acquired by the large businesses, and there is a movement towards the, uh, a better pricing power for the large players in this uh, in this business. Actually, one last question. Uh, seeing the current environment, uh, do you think uh, that uh, uh, the packaging will, uh, business will increase because uh, the economy is not doing well? So ultimately, uh, consumption will be hurt. So do you think that packaging business will do well in India? Uh, see, I'll tell you, the flexible packaging is largely targeted towards the food segment. And that segment is probably, you know, uh, the one which is absolutely uh, recession-proof or the down-cycle-proof and all that. There will be some segments which will get affected like FMCG consumption and all that, but because a very large part of the flexible packaging is oriented towards packaging food, uh, which is growing as the people are growing as the, uh, you know, the consumption on the food side will keep on, you know, sort of uh, growing. Okay, sir. Thanks, sir. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Kunal Gupta from First Water Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for taking my questions. Uh, you mentioned that uh, early FY21 is when you are expecting, uh, you know, some revenues from the new capacities in Hungary and Nigeria. Uh, are both of these expected uh, around the same time, or you expect one of them to come earlier? Mm, I think around the same time, both of them will come. So early FI21. Just one second. I'll just. Uh, Mr. Bhakta, does that answer your question? No, no, they are, they are checking. can give you that offline, the more precise details about the commissioning and all that. Okay, and uh, are these supposed to be in a phased manner in a, where we are going to add more lines or is it going to be, uh, as of now, whatever has been planned is coming on stream all at once? No, I didn't get your question. So, so as of now, whatever lines, has been these planned. Are the, these are the two lines which are currently ordered. Okay, and which fair are enough. Okay. Now, uh, with regard to Acepto, uh, while you said that there is still uh, some amount of uncertainty, if you could 
you know, tell us uh, the worst case scenario from a current financial year point of view, assuming that, uh, you know, there is uh, not much traction with regard to the large customers, then what is the kind of uh, burn rate that we should look at in terms of so, cash uh, So there is no burn as of now at an EBITDA level. Uh, yes, they will be under recovery in the interest as well as the depreciation cost, but uh, even in the current quarter, uh, there is no burn on the EBITDA. So we are already uh, breaking even at the EBITDA level? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And uh, with regard to the employee cost, uh, if I look at it year on year, there is almost a 16% increase. Mm. So what could be the reason for that? I think some of these new businesses where with the capacities we have set up, uh, like a septic or uh, holographic or even the packaging, uh, you know, we have uh, had uh, uh, expansion happening in the packaging side also in the last couple of years or so. So while the capacity utilization remains low, but you still have to man and train people and, uh, you know, uh, put them, uh, you know, to the, to the factories and all that. So it's not that, you know, if the plant is being underutilized, you can you can ask people to leave today and, you know, come when they join. So it's a, it's a special uh, skill, uh, so you have to carry the people along. Uh, apart from that, there is some general increase in the manpower cost, which happens over the years because of the increments and other cycles. Uh, but largely, uh, I would say that. So there is nothing uh, exceptional in the first quarter. So you are saying 16% uh, can be taken as uh, the increase, increase expected on a full year basis also? Yeah. Hello? Yes. Okay. Okay. And what, uh, with regard to the tax rate, it is very high for this quarter, both in the st especially in the standalone and a uh, uh, little bit higher on the console. So is there any reason for that and what kind of effective tax rate? Uh, should we uh, budget for the So current? I think this quarter, this uh, quarter fairly well sums up. While India, we will continue to remain under mat for the next uh, couple of years uh, for our projects in uh, Egypt and Mexico, where we are now starting to pay a higher amount of tax as we have absorbed or consumed most of the you know, the tax-free uh, regime, either because of the depreciation incentives available or some of the other incentives available. So there also the tax liabilities have uh, been higher in the quarter when compared to the same period uh, last year. So overall tax impact, uh, as we see in the current uh, financial year, is, uh, is definitely is about 27 crores in this quarter, which was about 15 crores in the last quarter. Right. The period last year. Right, right. Okay, with regard to the BOPET, uh, you mentioned obviously that other uh, peers have also seen a certain amount of jump in their uh, margins. So has that been more of an India phenomenon or it's uh, no, no, also it's global happened? Phenomenon. No, it's, no, global, it's global, global right? Phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. Because in our case, uh, the delta is not as uh, significant as it is in the uh, peers, as far as no, the... So that is what I said, that, you know, if we if we see the EBITDA excluding the engineering business, the YOY growth rate on a consolidated basis is 18%, and on a standalone basis, it is 35%. Right, right. And in terms of the capacities which are getting added at the industry level, is it only on the Bopet side where two lines are getting added, one in India and one uh, in Thailand? No, or India, India, one line will get added to in the last quarter, and then uh, you know there is uh, so Thailand is what uh, there is there is one line getting added there itself also, and then there is another line coming up in Europe also. Okay. And on the BOPP side? BOPP side, I won't have, uh, I, I'll not be able to tell you right now. Okay. Okay. Thanks. That answers my question. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Mohit Agarwal from Karma Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. So, uh, just, a, uh, just like a follow-up question on uh, 
the last conversation you were having is regarding the the delta we are seeing uh, in the rest of the competitors uh, in this you know last six seven quarters when we seen the margin cycle improve for Bopet, but but we haven't seen that uh, effect in Uflex. I understand that you're saying that you know uh, there has been uh, under recoveries of packaging and there has been one off. But we're seeing these one-offs and under recoveries for a while now, you know, like six, seven quarters. And, you know, virtually our bottom line is actually stagnant for the last six, seven quarters. Mm. So, and at the same time, you're seeing the customer, uh, the other uh, competitors, they have virtually doubled their bottom line. So, uh, when do you see this, uh, you know, this bottom line increase, which we, which has been eluding us for a while now, uh, when do you see? Can you could you, could you give us a guidance that you know finally we can see a growth there, or we can just see? I think uh, uh, what what has happened is with the exist with the other people that you are comparing us with. Uh, you know they they are only in the packaging films business. Uh, we are not only in that business, but we can we are in some of the other businesses also even. Uh, you know, while packaging is there, but within the packaging also, you have sub-segments of flexible packaging, you have aseptic packaging, uh, and then, you know, we are the ones who do our own uh, cylinders also, engineering also, uh, chemicals also. Uh, so, for us, you know, the business is far more complex rather than just a film player who is doing uh, you know, only the films and reporting uh, reporting his numbers accordingly. So, but when I compare myself just on a film to film basis, and you know, some of the players are only Bopet, you know, they don't have BOPP, while some of the players like Cosmo are only uh, BOPP players. So, uh, you, but you know, I have both. Uh, I have all the three BOPP, CPP, as well as uh, uh, you know, the BOPET, as well as, you know, some of the other complexities of some of the other businesses. But uh, while we don't report those numbers, because there's a lot of in-house consumption also, which is the same plant, it gets reflected at the cost itself in those numbers. But when we compare our third party vis-a-vis -vis our competitors, I can assure you that we are fairly competitive uh, you know, in all those, when if we compare ourselves, Bopet with say, an X player with 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 our capacity utilization or our uh, efficiencies, inefficiencies, or our margins or our spreads, uh, you know, they're they're fairly compatible. But you know, it's not possible to do a you know a full dissection. As I told you, it depends on the age of the plant and all those factors. But largely, when we do that in-house for our own consumption, I think we, we are fairly competitive with the, uh, with some of the large industry players in this segment. Okay. So I, I'll just take this question uh, one step forward. So uh, I understand you saying the business is more complex and, you know, you have packaging and a lot of other things which the other uh, competitors are not doing. But uh, shouldn't that be an advantage? For example, uh, all of these players are paying very high dividends, which we are not doing. Uh, at the same time, our interest cost is going high. Our depreciation is keep going high. I mean, we have been not expanded capacities after ISEP to, uh, I mean, not any major capacities we have expanded. But still, our depreciation is just uh, keep going up. And which is in in eating into the post EBITDA, uh, you know, accruals that we are having. So uh, my question is that, uh, you know, while all these uh, other players they are able to get uh, the cash flow generating from the film business redistributed in the form of dividends, what are we doing with this free cash flow generation? Because it's not helping us in our reducing our interest costs. It is not helping us reduce our overall absorb our other costs. So, is there any strategy on that? Because so, so, I think there, there also, you know, if it is only a film business, probably your sustenance capex is not too high in a, in a film line. Uh, but in a packaging business where, you know, the, the machines change, the customer requirements change and all that, so there is always a kind of a sustaining capex, which in our case, all the business put together should be at least about 200 crores a year. 
now that capex would largely be there because of the packaging business engineering business chemicals business you know the packaging group business not a very less in a in a, a pure packaging uh, film business so obviously with the you know that would entail additional depreciation that would if you borrowed to uh, do that uh, you know to that extent you have spent money by either by borrowing or not borrowing so that uh, in a way affects your uh, ability to uh, you know give that cash back to the shareholders so it's a, it's a combined effect of that if it is only a film play i agree that the cycle is good so there can be a lot of cash return to the uh, you know uh, to the shareholders but in a in a combined business like us you know it 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 is difficult and uh, it may also so happen that you know while we are riding uh, up cycle in one of our businesses or uh, uh you know the other business may still have uh, issues of uh, over capacity where you know the pricing power is not with you so obviously uh, you know you are uh, uh, your margins uh, are probably lesser in that and in the meanwhile you still have to do your sustenance capex you are looking to uh, you know keep your leadership position there also so a lot of money is then going into that uh, in that business now tomorrow a couple of years down the line it may so happen that you know the the packaging film business is not doing so well and the packaging business is doing uh, doing better because by the time the sectors which are plaguing the uh, the the issues which are plaguing this sector are are solved now so i think uh, there are no easy answers for uh, for for what you are you, you are asking for uh i think uh, the business dynamics only demands uh, you know that you you invest uh in upgrading yourself or uh, uh, you know uh, adding now you know the recyclability uh, all these factors as as we are seeing in this packaging business will come to the forefront if not today in another year down the line there may be more governmental regulations coming to play as to what you need to do about the recycling or biodegradability and all that so you will have to keep on investing in those businesses okay so uh, so can you give us a guidance sir when do you think all this reinvestment we are doing and uh, you know i i understand completely that you know companies investing in uh, recyclable products biodegradable products you are doing packaging and A, a whole lot of other things at the same time, and which is obviously ha- having an impact on the standalone film business. Do you see any? Can you give us any guidance in terms of when you think this consolidate or the synergies of this consolidated business will sh- start showing? Because it's been a while now. It's been three years. We are have the uh, absolutely constant bottom line. So, can you give us some guidance on that? So. uh so i would i can't nobody uh, can give you a guidance on that i can only tell you that l- learning from my experience of working in different industries uh you know being present in the different segments helps you uh you know uh, not having uh you know uh, you know you you may you may have a down cycle in one of your segments and you may have an up cycle in your segments but you know it's not that you are either totally out or you are totally at the high while for the for the only films companies they are typically uh, uh, the particularly the bopet ones uh, they are typically riding uh, uh, you know a, a good cycle currently but look at bopp they are not doing so well yes q1 has been better but if you see whole of fy19 that's not been good the packaging companies that's not been uh, a very good margins in the fy19 so you know when you are in a multiple businesses they will always be 1 plus 2 minus 2 plus 1 minus uh, you know that's way it plays out you know for me, for anybody uh, including me difficult to say when will you have all the businesses uh, you know optimizing and doing uh, uh, fully well I, i think that's an ideal situation that never happens in a uh, in a business as such
Okay, fair enough, sir. fair enough. Sir, one question on ASAP2. Uh, I just want to understand that, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, you've been talking to the big clients for a while now. You said you've been testing uh, their products and, you know, all this has been happening. So can you tell me what is really uh, ha hampering the conversion of these customers? Right? I mean, is it because they are still testing it or is it because of slowdown in the demand or is it because of branding or pricing of your uh, computer? What is that is is the missing part of the puzzle? So missing part of the puzzle is that, uh, you know, uh, we still not signed on the dotted line. Uh, the reasons could be as fold as what you have told, but uh, clearly, uh, you know, uh, one of the large reason is that, uh, you know, they probably also wanted to test out for a certain period of time that, uh, you know, it should not happen that uh, because, you know, they, they've been dealing with a monopoly situation uh, for the last so many years where there, there was one supplier. So if they move on, and I'm not able to come up to their expectations in terms of delivery and all that because, you know, any initial plant uh, would have some teething issues to begin with. So I think probably they were, they were, they were uh, playing a waiting game, keeping us engaged and uh, ensuring that, you know, at a, you know let them uh, uh, mature a bit and that's where we, we deal with them. So... To my mind, that is what uh, may be playing on uh, on their mind. And uh, but uh, again, as I said, that you know, a while I know that we've been telling you certain things, and uh, uh, the, it's not been happened so far. But um, I think uh, let's see next quarter. We, we are able to give you some good news on signing up of some of the large customer base. Okay, sir. So one last question, and. Uh this is regarding your recycling and biodegradable products. You know, in the filings, and you've been, even the chairman uh, keeps coming out with, uh, you know, with different ideas. Yeah, Uflex has been working upon, you know, different kind of biodegradable products that you've been uh, researching upon in your U.S. Uh, subsidiary. So uh, can you give us some idea of what, what's, what kind of work you're, you're doing and uh, what can we expect and, uh, in, you know, in the coming quarters on the biodegradable products? So very difficult for me to say anything on this call because, you know, because of the regulations, I shouldn't be stating it to only one set of the people. Uh, but because it's still a work in progress, all of this, so, um, and, you know, some few things what we're doing on, on the biodegradable uh, are still, uh, you know, uh, will take some time for us to, uh, so we want we we just we we just don't want to go to either to the regulators to announcing something where we are uh, you know today uh, do not have all the boxes tick uh, but I think the moment we will have all the boxes tick you know we will we will come and announce that but I can only give you a general guidance today that you know look the orientation and the efforts is to ensure that you know. Uh, this big disruption which is going to come to uh, which is going to happen in in the in the in the flexible packaging the plastic packaging industry uh, we are up to uh, the mark on addressing all the issues uh, keeping ourselves prepared for any eventualities on the regulation side tomorrow and that's what uh, you know we can tell for the time being Okay. Thanks. That's it. That's it for much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I would like to hand the conference over to Mr. Rajesh Agrawal for closing comments. Please go ahead, sir. So with that, uh, I would like to thank all for joining us today. Uh, this concludes our first quarter 2020 uh, conference call. Uh, we look forward to staying in touch in the coming quarters. Have a nice evening. Thank, thank you. Me. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen.